All right, man. So uh, do you have some time to talk right now? Yes, yes, definitely, man. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, number one, how are you? Uh, how are you doing? Good, good. Uh, here in London, uh, doing a lot of work for uh, for Mix Hell for my project, and uh, a lot of studio work. So it's good. Not not that many shows at at the end of uh, beginning of the year. So a lot of focus in the in the studio. So it's I, I like that a lot also. Yeah, you've been pretty gun ho on that project the last couple months. Do you uh, want to talk about it and give some people some more detail as to uh, what it's all about? Yeah, I mean, it's quite a special uh, thing that I do, which it really, after doing more than 20 years with uh, with Sepultura, I, I felt like something with like Mix Hell, it's a bit more in the sense, I don't know, like, special in a way that it doesn't really achieve as much as I did with Sepultura. So it, it it's almost like a little secret code thing that I do, you know, and very, very few people understands that. So, and, and it's, I have to say it's quite, it gives a lot of pleasure to do something like this. You know, I keep, it keeps it, you know, very special in the sense that I, I, I do, you know, little things with it, you know, do a lot of uh, collaborations with people that I admire and uh, it's not quite a big uh, commercial thing. So it's, it's fun to do more than anything. Right on. I think you uh, were touring with the project in December or something like that. Is that right? I can't remember. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was, the thing with Mix How that it's very different also because it, it's not really like a rock project. We don't really do like uh, like extensive tours with it. Where and also the releases are very are more you know like we release a few singles and and not really like like the again the rock thing where you do an album and you tour with it. So it's it's fun also because it it does give me a chance to to jump right back into the studio and work more. And, and release little things that, that create energy around the project rather than focusing for a long time on a, on a full record. Right on. Uh, we'll come back to Mixel stuff in a little while. I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about your history as a musician uh, in the metal world, if that's all right with you. Yeah, yeah. So you started playing drums uh, at about seven years old from uh, what I understand. Is that right? Yeah. And you uh, started Sepultura with your brother when you were about 14 years old? Like 13, I would say. 13, 14. And then by the time I was 14, almost 15, we, we did our first record with Sepultura, which was like a split EP. What was it like in your life and in your brother's life back then in Brazil that led you to thrash music and just playing heavy music in general? It's crazy because I think like with a lot of people, they got into like hardcore or, or metal and, and extreme music through pain, you know, like, and me and my brother's not different, you know, like we, we lost our father when we were really young and we never really recover that lost. And that made us really jump into the band and, and do something really also with each other. And I think also the, the thing like with brothers, sometimes uh, they do, you know, they do get very, uh, I don't know, like how to say, but they did get very together when, when things like that happen in the family. Probably if I still had my dad, I wouldn't be as close at a, as I am with my brother. So it's almost like a, a weird relationship, almost like we are father of each other. We take care of each other in many different ways. And, and things like that. And, and of course, when we started Sepultura, it was out of that, out of like searching for something that, you know, we, we were trying to focus our energy into something. And before that, we were very into uh, football and things like that, and especially being Brazilian. And then once we started listening more and more to music, I was already playing the drums. And then my brother got into, you know, start trying to form a kind of a band together. Mm -hmm. 
And that's when we jump into Sepultura. And I remember at that time, we had no aspirations of doing something, you know, commercial or, sure. or even big. It was just like we get locked in the room, me and him, and, and we would play pretty much all day where other kids would be doing crazy stuff like drinking and, and getting into fights and, and things like that. And for us, we had more fun playing music, playing covers of bands that we like and listening to, to music in a, like a boombox. That's that's how was our thing rather than the whole party, you know, all, all, all that other stuff that kids were into, that even kids that we hang out with, you know, we had something very different from them. I think because of that focus, you guys got so much attention so quickly. You did Bestial Devastations and Morbid Visions, and then you guys packed up and you moved from your small town to uh, Sao Paulo. Is that right? Yeah. At that point, it seems like you guys were completely focused, almost like a full-time band. Uh, did you know at that point that your life was essentially going to be uh, music and percussion, um, essentially uh, for the rest of your life? Was that your goal? I have to say that I, th I think we had no choice, really. Because I remember like, by being super young and our mom again, being very supportive, she was like, school is not really working for you guys. So you, you're going to have to really focus on, on your band, which is something that she totally saw that we love. And at the same time, like we would see a lot of, lot of our friends who, who were going to school and they were like hating life and getting jobs that they didn't like. So we, we felt like this is it. We're going to do this. And it and of course, and if it got to the point that we couldn't support ourselves or, or become like something that we couldn't do, that would be a different thing. But at the time, we we totally just put a hundred percent into Sepultura, even though, like like I said, it was something very small, and uh, the recognition it took, you know, time, especially for for a lot of people who didn't heard of us before, like or or heard of us only after we, we signed with Roadrunner and things like that. Like, we had quite a, a bit of a path before that, you know. So it's, it, for us, it felt very natural. Like, things were happening not, like, next day, all of a sudden, you have all this this madness going on with, you know, with playing in a band, touring, all that stuff. So it took a gradual time to, to get things rolling. Yeah, you two were 20 and 22 years old when you did Beneath the Remains and Arise, which is pretty crazy to think about. And those are considered classic metal albums. Yeah. Not just thrash albums, which is something pretty crazy to think about because you guys were just so young when you made them. It must have been such a whirlwind time for you. Uh, you know, you were so young and you uh, you became a household name within the, the heavy metal world uh, just so quickly coming from a small town. Yeah, it it was, at, and then again at the same time, like it was not really, you know, we didn't never really felt like a, a big pressure. It was more like, wow, this this is happening. We we gotta keep up doing things that you know the same way we were doing before, as far as like playing the music that we really really were into it. And I I think also we had an advantage by coming from such a small town like Belo Horizonte. Which things e even in São Paulo it was it was very segregated. Like if you like punk, the the metal kids will hate you. If and vice versa. And then where where we were in, in Belo Horizonte, there's not there was not much of a scene at all. So we would get all the tapes from you know from bands that we used to exchange letters and and demos. And those bands would be like someone like COC from, from US, like a hardcore band. And next day, we would get someone like Mayhem from, from Norway, which is like the beginning, early, early days of, of black metal. So all those things were just music for us. It was not like this, this separation. And, and then later on, I think that worked in, in our advantage of, of not being really trapped on, on a certain label for, for what we did. Your band definitely had an appeal to uh, hardcore kids at the time. 
I know for me, coming from a uh, metal background and becoming a hardcore kid, you guys were a great crossover band for me. A lot of hardcore kids started paying attention with Chaos AD. Yeah. That record really blew some uh, doors open for you in terms of uh, appealing to uh, other crowds. You guys moved to Arizona at that point, right? Yeah, it's funny because Max was already in Arizona, and then we decided to write the album there, and then... Uh, Andreas and Paulo also moved, and but then I, I decided not to go to Arizona. I didn't like, I still don't like Arizona, you know, like as far as like somewhere else to leave. Sure. So I moved to San Diego, which at the time I, I really liked. You know, I had a few friends who were skateboarding and, and surfing at the time, so I kind of like went into to uh, San Diego, and then. During the week, I would fly to to Arizona to to work with practice and things like that. But and and it, and it was really cool because I think the 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 admiration that we got from a lot of like the hardcore fans it also came from from us being fans of those bands. It was not just you know us trying to emulate certain sounds or, or things like that. It was more like a fan you know, of that kind of music, trying to incorporate some of those elements on what we were doing. And I, I guess people could, you know, connect to that somehow, even like for kids or hardcore kids, they, they could see that we're not, you know, just jumping on the, on this wave of trying to be hardcore or trying to be thrash, death, whatever, you know, so it was quite cool to see that, you know. It's not really talked about all that much, uh, your connection to the hardcore scene, but you have one. You uh, played on a Strife album. Uh, talk about your friendship with that band. Um, I know personally, for me, um, one of the first times I got to see Sepultura was, I believe, on a, uh, a package tour you did uh, with Sick of It All, uh, Sacred Reich, and maybe Napalm Death. It was a super diverse show, but it was uh, primarily a hardcore show. And uh, it seemed like the hardcore kids in the world uh, started to take a liking to you guys rather quickly. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing with uh, with that tour, when we got, it was us, sick of, sick of it all, Napalm Death and uh, Sacred Reich. It was kind of like an answer to at the time they had the uh, the titans you know like clash of the titans tour clash of the titans yeah and then we were like we felt like man that that's you know that's too much of of a one thing you know it's like too much of a one dimension kind of bill and we felt like man did, if we could bring something like like napalm death which if, at the time it was like one of the most extreme bands at you know, coming from England, bringing that that heavy sound, and then some someone like Sick of It All, which at the time for us it was like one of the coolest bands that 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 we seen live, who had you know of course like the whole New York thing, and they also had uh, I don't know a bit of 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 like a a metal crossover in, in their some of their sounds and things like that, so. It was really cool to do that because we, at that time, we had a chance of doing something like curating a, a, a small festival with bands that we love and also friends, you know. So that that was like the perfect thing, you know. You could go out with those four bands and they were, we we're all friends and, and we we're all playing also at the time like different kind of music rather than just straight metal for metal kids, you know. And uh, what about your relationship with Strife? They've been friends of yours for a long time and you played on one of their records? Yeah, I mean, the thing with Strife, I, I saw them, I think it was right before, uh, it was during Chaos AD when we were writing the album. I saw them playing live and I think it was in San Diego and they were amazing. And of course, I, I was really into a lot of the Victory, you know, bands and, and things like that. And and they, but they had also something different about the the their sound and their attitude that it was quite appealing, you know, for, for, for me. And then I built this relationship, especially with Andrew, the guitar player, which is one of my best friends. You know, every time 
we we see each other. It was really cool. And the funny story on on playing on a Strife record, it was I was doing a tour with Cavalera, and my drum tech at the time he had some trouble with his family, with his father not being well, so he couldn't make this the American tour that we we're doing with Cavalera. And then I was talking to a few people to see who could you know join. And of course, I had no time to do like the work visa and things like that. So it had to be an American guy. And I talked to Andrew. I was like, Andrew, do you know anybody? And he was like, yeah, I can, you know, I can check for you, but maybe I can do this. And I was like, wow, this is really cool that he's going to stop whatever he's doing to help me out. And then during that tour, he he showed me some demos of the, the record. And he was like, man, can you play in one of the songs? And I thought to myself, I was like, look, man. You did something for me that I really appreciate, and I'll try to do something. So I'll, I'll I'll do the record for you. And luckily enough, he could come to Brazil to to do it. It was it was easier than me to fly to LA. So it worked out great, you know. And, and it's at the, again, it was more like a friendship thing, more than the, the business or, or or you know or even the music, you know. Like it was really like a friend helping out another friend, you know, and of course I really love the, the result of it, you know, that's great. Well, you know, currently you're playing in two bands, uh, both of them with family members. We already talked about mix hell a little bit, yeah. um, but you've been doing Cavalier conspiracy with your brother, which seems to be a continuation of the, the thrash spirit, uh, of early Sepultura. Um, why don't we talk about that a little bit? Uh, that record's pretty interesting. It's it's funny because like I remember at the time I left uh, Sepultura, and then uh, I was talking to Max. I, I came to Phoenix to visit him. Like we're just like hanging out as family. And then he was like, "We should do something together musically." Because of course I don't know. Max is very he's like a, a workaholic as far as like music. He's writing music all the time and and always thinking of different things to do. So he was like. What about if we try to do something together? And the idea of having a new project, for me, it was very, very exciting. Rather than, you know, trying to reform uh, some kind of a Sepultura thing. He was like, let's just see what happens. And then, of course, like once we start writing music, it, it starts to take more, it, it was taking shape of, of things that we were into it musically and then, it became what Cavalera Conspiracy it is now. But it at the time I remember it's like it's really cool because it, it was something new. And we had no idea what would come out of it as far as like music. Especially so, now, you know, it seems like uh every single European festival that I've ever attended has four, five, six reunited bands coming together and playing. Um and sometimes it's really special. Um sometimes it's it it's not. What I've really respected about how you guys have handled Sepultura is that you haven't immediately reunited and you've continued on your own path um, as brothers, uh, as musicians, just kind of doing your own thing and evolving. And uh, it's a pretty powerful statement. Yeah, I mean, that that was the thing that really attracted me because, of course, those reunions, they're, they're cool in the sense that sometimes a kid never had a chance to see the same way if, I don't know, if, you know, a band that I really love that I never had a chance to see, if they they going to do something special, I would go see it. But at the same time, if you focus your whole, uh, whatever you're doing just on that, I think it's it's not exciting, you know. Sometimes it's your living things. Yeah, it's like, it, it's cool, of course. I would love to, you know, even my kids, sometimes they talk about it. They're like, wow, I, we never got to see like the you know, a Sepultura show with, you know, especially with you and Max. And I always say, like, if it happens, it'll, it'll be really cool. And, of course, it'll be very different, you know, because any of those reunions, I don't think they capture the real thing because it, it's really about the I don't know, the synchronicity of, of, like, being at a certain time in a certain place. So it's never the same thing, but it could be something funny and 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 cool for especially for someone that never got to see the original thing you know 
after Max left the band, uh, you guys went out and you got former Outface singer Derek Green uh, to front Sepultura. And the band continued and still continues, you know, writing and playing and performing uh, relevant music to this day without you guys in the band. Um, talk about those days uh, without Max and what the dynamic was like for you personally since you were so close with them in the first place. Yeah, I mean, it, it was... For me, it was very weird, I have to say, because, yeah, because I had been used to working with Max for so many years, and then the whole thing with him leaving the band, I felt like, wow, I've been, I, I can't just stop this this whole thing. I had this, this, you know, in the back of my mind where I really wanted to continue, you know, writing music and, and doing things, and of course, it, it's very special, the fact you know, that we got Derek, which is such a great guy, you know, to come in. And I think we got really lucky more in the in a personal level than than in the professional level, because he's, he's a very special person. So I think in that sense, it was really cool. But at the same time, it was very hard to the point that at, at one point I, I had to stop. You know, I, I I didn't feel comfortable enough with what I was doing. You know, I, I wasn't really enjoying a hundred percent and then i decided to to leave the band and at that time i didn't even know if i was gonna play music anymore i, I was just you know i took a whole year off and and concentrated on on my family i had a newborn son and all those things so i had no idea what, what was going to be my future and then cavalier conspiracy and, and mix how happened which it's really cool because then again somehow it became almost like this two family thing that I do, you know. It's a really cool dynamic, you know. They're both so different from one another. Let's talk about Mix Hell for a little bit. Um, that's your project with your wife. Uh, it's a very diverse, dynamic sound. It's aggressive. Uh, it's electronic, but there's a lot of uh, elements of live percussion uh, what are your plans with it? Uh, do you have releases planned, tours, uh, just what's going on? What's your approach? Yeah, I, I, that's, that's my, my, uh, perfect, uh, plan for mix. is to keep it special. You know what I mean? Like not really sacrifice too much into as far as like at the end of the day, it's like, I try not to push it too much to the point that makes her head to be my, my main uh, source of, of making money and things like that. So in that sense, I, 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 if I can continue doing that, that's, that's amazing. Cause of course, you know, we all know at the end of the day, we do have to compromise a few things that we do. So we feed, you know, our kids and things like that. But at the same time, if we can do both we can have you know something special something fun and still support you know our family that for me that's the perfect idea of success you know it, it it's that it's, it's not about you know like selling millions it's not about you know this this whole madness you know of social media and things like that it, it's really about playing what we like and then at the end of the day, you know, I see my kids, they're all happy and they, they have a good life. And that's it. That for me, I'm, I'm more than paid, you know. Oh, it's a beautiful thing what you guys are doing, you know. You're just uh, keeping it special. You're keeping it simple, especially when there's so much competition out there in terms of bands trying to be heard, um, trying to get some sort of uh, visibility for, uh, for what they're doing. Yeah, that's it. You know, like not really... You know, I have no big, crazy, you know, like desires of, of, of certain things, you know, like for me, very simple, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons I really like London. It's people really appreciate the simple life here. I find, you know, it's, it's, it's better if you do simple things and, and you enjoy your, your simplicity then the whole showing off, like I have a big car and, and things like that. So I find it that really, really inspiring, you know. That's great. Well, I don't know. I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to, to cover with you. I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Um, as you 
you know, you've been running around like crazy today and, uh, yeah, it's just awesome to, uh, to talk to you about, uh, some, some past stuff as well as, uh, the future of, uh, Igor. It's great. Cool, man. I, I'm, I really appreciate also, you know, and, uh, I will see you, uh, in London in a couple months. Are you coming down? Yeah, we have, uh, we have two shows and we're playing Bristol at Temples Festival. Nice. And we're also playing, um, we're playing a show at ULU in London on May 30, 30th, I think, or 31st, something like that. That's so awesome. Hopefully I, I will see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, you know, this time, hopefully we can, I know how crazy it is on tour, but let's maybe try to do something a bit more relaxed. Maybe have some coffee, you know, you guys can come visit my place or something like that. Yeah, man. Uh, have a good night. Keep me, uh, do you, oh, do you want to, uh, inform anybody, uh, as to, uh, where they can find info on Mix Hell and, uh, Cavalier Conspiracy right now? The internet? It's, yeah, <laughs> just simple, you know. Go to the just, internet and type it yeah, in. Yeah, those channels, they usually, you know, like, oh, like those tools that are working right now, which, you know, right now it's basically facebook twitter thing you know yeah. who knows what's what's gonna be tomorrow right on all right well, <laughs> you know but it's it's you know people can find whatever uh, info on, on on gigs and and releases and and free stuff all, all all that stuff it's somewhere in there okay right on man yeah and also i have to say man the the label it's it's crazy you guys are putting out so much good music man Thank you. We're we're trying. We're trying to put out what we consider the the best the the best aggressive and independent bands that are out there, and I, I, it it means a lot that somebody like you is paying attention. Yeah, I mean, like that, that's the cool thing about it. Again, uh, when I when I downloaded that sampler you guys did. Yep, uh, probably the the summer sampler. Uh, yes, yep. yes. And I have to say that it, it was really refreshing to see that. It was. It went to many different directions there. For sure. That's that's really cool, man. You know, because I also again, of course, it's cool to have certain things that that really focused. Sure. But as as a music fan, you know, I also I like to see people breaking barriers and, and trying different things. So big up on the on the label, man. 